Oh yeah, I see connected to cloud server. Um, I can view them admit all. Hello. All right, we're just letting everybody in here real quick. Mm -hmm. We'll get started. Great, well, we'll get started. Uh, I just turned off everybody's video so it wouldn't be distracting. And we'll also have you on mute for right now until we're ready to uh, take questions and, and have some discussion at the end. So welcome to this first presentation of the year. And we're so excited to have you here and have so many of you here. We are trying to start the year out right with some either New Year's resolutions or plans to improve our health. The pandemic has been a huge monkey wrench in our lives. And some people have kind of gone one of two roads. There are some people that have completely gone off the rails. And we know that there is um, unfortunately a huge increase in alcohol abuse and opioid um, overdoses, but there are other people that have taken advantage of this time in isolation and decided they were gonna do something for themselves. And so we've had um, spoken to a, a variety of people who have lost weight, exercise more, improved their diet and decided that this time of kind of sequestration was going to be me time. So um, if that's not you and you need help with your motivation, uh, you're in the right place. Um, so um, Jessica, who's our functional nutritionist and health coach at the Sklar Center, has just done fantastic things with our patients who have goals they're trying to achieve and need some help with it. So um, let's see, I'm going to ask everybody to um, turn off your videos. I'm going to stop your videos if you haven't. And um, Jessica is going to talk tonight about a new program that we have at the Sklar Center called the Feel Better Lifestyle. And it has various components to it. And she's going to talk to you about some of the theory behind why we recommend what we recommend. And I have to say, during this time of pandemic, uh, the more you can do to improve your immune system, the better off you'll be. And so all of the lifestyle things that we talk about sleep, nutrition, and exercise, uh, stress reduction, all are have the ultimate um, effect of improving your immune system. So um, I will, with that, let Jessica take it away. She has a presentation and a slideshow for you. And then we will take questions in the chat and answer them at the end. So go ahead, Jessica. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see the slides. So that should be up and going now. Um, it's so good to be here on the first of the year. Uh, welcome to our little seminar here. Um, so I, I used to start off these things where I gave a little bit of a history about myself, and I've kind of fallen off of that, but I've, I've noticed a lot of new names today. So I wanted to just kind of introduce myself. As Dr. Sklar said, my name is Jessica. I'm with the Sklar Center. I'm the nutritionist and health coach. I've actually been with the Sklar Center for about a little over four years now. Um, and I've been working in the health and fitness industry for about 15 years now. And uh, my own journey has made me super passionate about helping people realize the strategies to live life forever or live a healthy life forever instead of quick diets, quick fixes, 
quick things to do. And I really think it's important to understand that it's, um, it's a little challenging sometimes and that's okay. But what I hear is I wanted to give you guys some knowledge and some information to motivate you and um, get you excited about implementing some of these things uh, so we can go through this. I know that I've gone through it personally um, in my own weight loss journey and weight maintenance journey because um, I find that weight maintenance is harder than weight loss for a lot of us and also health maintenance because um, we can be skinny and unhealthy. So we want to make sure we're healthy and we have a, we're a good healthy weight and all those things in January is such a good time for it because we're all kind of geared up and ready to, to make some changes. Um, so with that, let's get started. Uh, happy 2021. I think that we can all rejoice <laughs> that 2020 is over, although we are not out of the woods. Um, with a lot of the things that happened last year, uh, it's been a rough load for a lot of us. I know in my personal and professional life, I think every patient I've talked to, and I think that every friend that I've talked to, we have all gone through our own individual struggles this last year. Um, but we made it and we're gonna, we're gonna be positive and optimistic and we're gonna make 2021 a, a great year. Um, as Dr. Sklar said, he, uh, the one thing the coronavirus has taught us and the one thing 2020 has taught us is that our health and is the utmost important. Our immune system um, is how we can handle any kind of virus and bacteria, let alone a pandemic, but just any virus and bacteria. It really showed us how important it is to have our health all the time because we never know what's gonna happen. You know, I know a lot of times people will have that mindset of like, oh, I'll get healthy one day or, oh, I have time, but we don't because we don't know what's around the corner. So hopefully 2021 can be the year of regrowth and rebuilding. And today we wanna talk about some strategies that will help you get there long-term and not just short-term for January resolutions. Um, so with that, I wanted to kind of start off with January resolutions. I know a lot of people as a nutritionist come see me um, because they wanna lose weight. And a lot of times I'm very busy in January because we kind of, by from October to November to December, we don't do anything. So January comes and we're ready and we're motivated and we have a resolution. We're gonna, we're gonna make something happen. And um, typically they don't work. Now, not always, of course, some of them do work. And hopefully the ones that we, the uh, suggestions we provide for you today will work for you long-term. Um, but statistically speaking, most people give up by mid feb or by February. Um, my journey started where I actually worked as a personal trainer and I will never forget, uh, the gym on the first week of January was packed. People were waiting in line for machines and there were faces I've never seen before. And two, maybe three weeks in, we were back to our normal crowd. Um, and I saw it year after year after year is everyone's in there, they're motivated and it just slowly starts to go away. Uh, so we want you to kind of motivate you today to not maybe think of this as a resolution, but think of this as a lifestyle change. Um, typically when people do resolutions, they're very extreme and it's very easy to fall back into our old habits and same kind of thing with dieting in general as we, we give up these, I'm never going to eat sugar again, or I'm never going to eat carbs again, or I'm not going to drink again. And it can be a lot, um, a lot to process. So we tend to do it for, oops. Sorry about that. We tend to do it for a short period of time and then we fall back into our old habits. And what we want to do is make small changes to have these habits last with us for life. I also find that um, the repeated failures makes us feel like a failure and really demotivates us to try and to continue to be healthy. Um, I've heard from so many patients and so many clients that I worked with of like, I've tried everything and it doesn't work. And what's the point when I'm not getting my results I want? And it's just so easy to kind of give up and fall into our, our old habits. So today we're going to talk about um, things that motivate you against that. So we need to rethink our resolutions. We need to change our mindset. We need to, to reframe it into a little bit more positive a change from this is a January resolution to this is a sustainable lifestyle. This is something that you can do for life. And we encourage you to do for life. Um, I find that most extreme diets and quick fixes and extreme changes um, really do not work long term. Someone will lose weight quickly and they'll feel good and then they'll just kind of slowly fall back into their old ways. So we really want to kind of expect a little bit slower results so we can get the results um, that we want. And we want to uh, make small changes to really embrace a healthy lifestyle. 
And another key factor that I find is really important is that we have to include everything um, lifestyle and diet wise. So it's not just nutrition, although I do think that nutrition is a huge component for health, our immune system, weight, really everything. Um, but it's also exercise, sleep, and stress management. So today I'm going to give you guys some tips for all of those and how we can slowly start to incorporate those in our lives um, and make those lifestyle changes. Okay. So we are going to talk about diet first. So diet, I think, is foundational. We really want to make sure we have a healthy diet. Um, because it is really just the foundation to everything. It helps with our immune system. It helps with weight loss. It helps keep our blood sugar stable. Um, I mean, if you ever have any health issues, diet is, uh, can be the answer. If you change the diet to a correct diet. So similar to changing our mindset with January resolutions, I also think it's important to get the right mindset around food. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with so many people and we live in a diet culture and um, we're very kind of have the mentality of, we think that dieting is torture. Like, oh, I can't eat any carbs. Or, oh, I don't get to eat any sugar anymore. And we have a very negative feeling about it when really we should show, show that in a positive light. Um, our culture, and I think every culture is celebrates food, celebrates with food. Food is love. When you love someone, you make them someone. When someone's sick, you make them soup. We have gatherings. Um, well, not as much right now, but in general we do. Um, but we like to show love around food, be with our friends, be with our family, be with all the people that we care about. And instead of thinking that I'm on a diet, I'm trying to be healthy, um, this is so miserable, I can't you know, show that love, want to start thinking about how choosing to eat healthy is showing yourself love. It's showing your body love. It's the ultimate form of self-care. It's the ultimate form of, I love myself so much. I want to eat all this good, healthy food. So I provide my body with the nutrients it needs to feel good, be energetic, have a good, a strong immune system, be healthy and be there for the, for my life and be present for what I'm, what's going on. So I think that's a really important uh, mindset change. So when you go into your January resolutions, which is really just your lifestyle goals, uh, we want you to start thinking about how can you show yourself a little extra love by the food that you're giving it and by the healthy stuff that you're putting into where you feel good. Um, we also want, I also want to note that it's important to remember progress, not perfection. Um, we are very much in, an, and this kind of goes along with the 80, 20 rule as well, but we very much live in an all or nothing society. Um, people are really good at dieting and following. I can, like, I hear this all the time. I can follow an exact plan. You tell me exactly what to eat. I will follow it. But then the minute they don't have an exact plan, it's hard to maintain that weight loss. And I know for my own journey, that's where I struggled. I, I lost weight pretty easily. And then when I tried to maintain it, I just couldn't seem to find that balance. Um, so it's always about progress, not perfection. It's always about, we're going to mess up. We're going to eat something that's not healthy. Um, and that's what the 20% is for, but we need to focus on 80% of our lives forever, not just in January, uh, is about eating that good, healthy food so we can be healthy and have a good system um, and a good base for you know our anti-inflammatory, our strong immune system, low oxidative stress. Um, and just be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. I also like to point out when it comes to food is that to truly change our diet um, long-term, we need to make sure that we set up our body chemistry correctly. Um, we cannot over willpower uh, the urge and cravings when our body starts to crave things. And let's just say you're someone who is used to eating a ton of carbs and then you go, okay, it's January. I want to lose weight. I'm going to lower myself with carbs. You're going to crave carbs. And it's not about willpower or you being a strong enough person to do that. It's about setting up your body chemistry collect correctly, feeding yourself the right kind of food. So it'll be easier to defend those cravings. Um, so it's really important to kind of have that mindset of it's a process and it's a journey. It doesn't just, it's not about just being extreme or being having willpower. It's about really embracing all of these changes. So how do we create a healthy diet for life? Let's kind of start to put some factors together so you guys can create your own healthy diet. Some things that I want you to think about, um, some categories is we have now entered into the world, which I'm happy that 
more and more research is coming out about this, but it is not about calories. Um, so I wrote macronutrients versus calories. And I know that now, so macronutrients are the three main nutrients that provide us with energy. So it's protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Um, it's not necessarily about counting your macros, but what's important, what you eat is way more important than how much of it you eat. So we lived in a world where it was all about calorie counting. So if someone's going to go on a diet, they're going to go, okay, I'm going to eat 1200 calories. I got these bars. They're 200. I have this snack. It's hundred. I have my lunch. It's 400. I have my dinner. It's 400. And they kind of live within this like calorie counting phase. It's not about that anymore. It's about what are you eating? It's what are you, what food are you putting into your body? Food is information. And every time we eat, we want to give our body the right information. So that's the first mindset switch when you're thinking about um, how to set up a healthy diet. The next one that I think is extremely important is food quality um, and probably the most overlooked. Um, I know when I first got into the industry, um, I, my education was based on conventional medicine and conventional teachings. And it was like, oh, if you can do organic, great. If not, whatever. And then you start to really learn about certain things and it matters. Um, food quality is very, very, very important. And it's now take time to take the switch from kind of eating whatever we want to making sure that we have organic as much as possible. I know that it's not possible all the time. I understand, um, but organic vegetables as much as possible. We want to have grass fed, pasture raised, wild caught, which are kind of verbs for um, proteins, but really important to making sure we're getting healthy proteins. Um, just the kind of a little reason why when you're eating a protein that's unhealthy. So let's just take grass fed for an example. When a cow eats corn, that fat actually turns into omega-6s, which are inflammatory in our body. But when a cow eats grass, that fat actually turns into omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory. So by just making that one change right there to all dairy products and all beef products being grass-fed instead of just being conventional, you were going to lower your inflammation and give your body good, healthy fats um, instead of giving them the fats that could be a little bit more inflammatory and cause problems down the line. So again, it's not necessarily, um, about the calories of the beef. It's about where's our beef coming from. We really, really want to make sure we're focusing on food quality. Another important, um, factor when it comes to creating this healthy diet for life is gut health. And again, it's trendy now to talk about gut health, which is great. Um, which is again, really fantastic. I feel like 10 years ago, when I used to talk about it, people would be like, they wouldn't even like understand what the gut is. But now we've all heard these terms about microbiomes and our gut bacteria. We have good gut bacteria and we have bad gut bacteria. Um, and it's really important to have a diet that focuses on increasing this good gut bacteria and um, creates balance. Um, a good healthy gut has been contributed in research to be, have a strong immune system. It's good for our heart. It's good for our brains as well. Um, it improves moods, healthy sleep. It's really good for digestion. People with skin issues, a lot of times people who have like really chronic inflammation of the skin, it's actually gut issues. So in general, we wanna focus on making sure that we have a nice healthy gut and incorporate foods that are gonna help support our gut, which we'll go into a little list in here in a second. So how do we do this? How do we make this change? What's our diet that we're gonna create for 2021? Um, so this is kind of like your guideline that you can use. Um, and then we'll kind of pick it apart and you have to create your own diet because that's actually the first step into truly living a lifelong healthy life is to find the balance that works best for you. Um, so in today's world, everything is labeled. There's keto, there's paleo, there's intermittent fasting, there's vegan, there's vegetarian, there's Mediterranean. There's a ton of diets out there. Um, start thinking about you're a flexitarian. We can all eat different types of diets. We don't have to stick to one extreme diet. We have one that's a little bit more preferred, which I'll talk about, but you want to have these principles no matter what you're doing. So no matter what diet you're doing, um, you really want to make sure you're focusing on 50% of your food comes from vegetables. Um, I put vegetables first and fruit, but really vegetables are what you want most of your meals to come from. So if you're looking at your plate, and I'm sure you've heard this before, half of your plate should be those vegetables. Um, get a wide variety, get leafy greens, get beets, mushrooms. It doesn't have to only be salads. It can be, there's so many fun ways to get vegetables out there. So you really want to make sure that 50% um, of your diet comes from vegetables. And that's like volume looking wise. Um, so if you're, again, not having to measure or count calories all the time, but it's more of just how much are you eating? 
Uh, again, I'm going to say it one more time, food quality matters. So when you're building your perfect meal plan, you want to make sure you're choosing organic, non-GMO, grass-fed as much as possible, pasture-raised when it comes to eggs, wild-caught when it comes to fish. Um, these are kind of the terms that you really want to start looking for. All diets, I recommend to have a moderate amount of lean protein. Um, a lot of times people will overeat protein when they try to lose weight because they think that if I just eat protein and vegetables, I'll be fine. But we want to make sure that we're eating about half of our body weight in ounces of protein. I mean, give or take, it's everyone's personal goals are a little different, but that will kind of give you a good little base. And then you want to have some good healthy fats. Um, and this is where I feel like is under used um, again in the world that we used to live in we were told that fats were bad on a regular basis stay away from fats they were kind of demonized um, but fats are good healthy fats are good and healthy fats come from healthy animal products like salmon or grass-fed beef grass-fed butter um, but they also come from vegetarian products like avocados olives coconuts nuts and seeds are the main ones and then avocado oil olive oil and coconut oil so you want good healthy fats as a part of our diet um, another really important thing that's, I think, foundational to a healthy diet is thinking about portions that support our blood sugar. Uh, and I'll kind of talk about this a little bit more in depth in the next slide, but when we eat high carbs, no matter what the carb, and this is where I feel like some people get a little confused with, oh, it's whole grain, or I'm only going to eat, um, you know, grains that are, that are whole grains. But if it's too many carbs, it's going to spike up your blood sugar. And if it spikes up your blood sugar, your body releases insulin. And if your body has too much insulin, it starts to can cause a whole cascade of problems within your body. You become insulin resistant. It can raise your blood sugar in a more level. It's, it's just not what we want. So we want to have a nice balanced blood sugar. And that would mean that you have healthy fat and protein with every meal. So that's going to kind of be the first step to think about. So fermented food. So fermented food is what uh, is going to help support our gut health. So that's kind of what we were talking about uh, the last slide. Um, you really want to make sure that you eat some kind of fermented food in our diet. Now, this is not popular in our culture. Um, I find that we do not have the palates for fermented foods like other people do. But it's something that we really want to start incorporating every day. Um, I will say because of me coming from a previous sugar junkie, <laughs> I hated fermented food. When I first drank a kombucha, which is probably one of the um, sweeter fermented foods, I was like, this is disgusting. I don't know who drinks this. And then now I crave it. I love it. I eat sauerkraut every day with breakfast. I put apple cider vinegar as my main dressing. Um, so you really just want to make sure that you keep giving it a try because it will help. It, you'll start to enjoy it once you kind of get used to it with your taste buds. Um, another little side tip, if you kind of indulged in a lot of sweets this holiday season, which don't we all? Um, fermented foods is a really great way to lower our cravings for sugar as well. So if you're feeling like you're craving sweets, really try to find something fermented to help you out. Um, if you wanted to start off easy with fermented food, I recommend doing a kefir or a yogurt. It's a dairy fermented food. You want to get grass fed if possible. And those will be something that you can have um, on, a, on a regular basis. It's a little bit palatable um, no sugar added ones um, to see if you enjoy them. You can mix them into a shake as well, if that's a little bit much. Um, and then the other big thing that's foundational, I think, and we kind of, again, know this, but to be reminded is that we really want to avoid sugar, processed foods and refined oils. Um, with There's so much stuff on the market these days where it's labeled organic and, um, you know, this is contains no fat or this all of these things that kind of make it seem like it's healthy, but it's not healthy. If it has a lot of sugar, if it's heavily processed, even if it's labeled organic, um, you know, I, my, my son's person who watches them, she wanted to give them organic mac and cheese and I get it. The box was labeled organic, but it's still a processed food. So it's something to think about when you're going through the grocery store, just because it's labeled organic, just because it's something that looks healthy on the outside, it might not be the best for our health. So we wanna eat whole foods as much as possible. Again, there's that 80-20 rule. Life happens and we have to eat some processed foods sometimes. So in terms of numbers, what it looks like is 
for vegetables, I recommend you to eat four to six cups of the non-starchy vegetables every day. And that should be about like, if you're looking at your plate, about half your plate. Um, and that's a good goal to go for. Um, now, some of you guys will be like, oh, I eat that, no problem. I have a huge salad with about two cups of spinach. I have roasted breast, um, vegetables at dinner, so that's no problem. And some of you are gonna be like, oh my gosh, that seems impossible. So start small. So wherever you're at, add a cup until you get to that, add a cup a week until you get to that four to six cups every day mentality. But you really wanna make sure that you're eating on a regular basis. Um, I am a nutritionist. I tell people to eat their vegetables every day and I do not get it in every day. So we do the best we can. Vegetables can be challenging to get in on a regular basis. Um, a little tip and trick that I do like is don't be too scared of the freezer section. The problem with vegetables is that they go bad quickly. And nowadays, a lot of us are trying to go to the grocery store less and less. Um, I know I'm trying to cut back down to, to continuing on going once a week. So I, I like to get organic frozen vegetables. So on those days when my vegetables are not as fresh, I have something in the freezer that I can serve to the family and to myself that's vegetable based. So don't be scared of getting stuff like that, getting a little creative. Um, with using your vegetables. You can also freeze spinach or lettuces. So this is something that I hear um, a lot. People have problems with like they'll buy a, a giant thing of lettuce and they'll go bad before they're ready to get to it. You can freeze that and it's best if you use it for like shakes or soups. But if you freeze like a thing of kale and you want to throw that into like a chicken soup that you made a couple weeks on the line, that will turn out just great. And that'll be a great way for you to get some vegetables. So that's a, so there's a lot of hell, exciting ways that you can get vegetables um, that are easy and convenient. Um, Every meal should have some component of vegetable protein and fat. And if that's your base of all your meals to where like, do I, where's my vegetables? Where's my protein? Where's my fat? If you have a little carb, if you have a little grain, if you have a little legume, that's fine, but that's your base. We wanna make sure that you have that on every single meal. Um, as I mentioned earlier with the helping the high, the blood sugar, we wanna avoid those high, high carb meal only um, meals because they will help raise our blood sugar. So you always want to make sure you pair it with some kind of protein or fat. Um, and this is even true, like for healthy carbs. So like sweet potatoes, you know, if you're eating a giant sweet potato and you don't have anything else really added to it, um, it's going to be too much carbs for your body. So you want to make sure that your carbs are at a, a reasonable portion. Um, in general, now everyone is different depending on your blood sugar levels and your weight loss goals, but in general, a half cup cooked is my general serving size that I recommend for your, the carb portion of your meal. And then you have your protein and your fat and your vegetables. Grains, grains are a hard one because um, everyone loves our grains. We all love our bread. Um, but I really do think that to develop a healthy diet long-term, especially as we age, we need to keep grains in moderation. And I understand that whole grains are something that has been told that has been really healthy for us. Um, but one, I would like to talk about the difference between a whole grain flour versus just whole grains. So bread, like whole grain wheat bread is, is processed into a flour and it's gonna be a lot more carbs that our body can handle than if you actually were to eat like rice. So really, if you're gonna eat grains, you want it to be whole grains. So like rice and oatmeal. And we do find at the Scholar Center, a lot of people benefit from eliminating completely. So I know that that's a little scary for some people, but something to kind of think about. If you're not hitting your weight loss goals, if your blood sugar is high, if you need to, to really make some changes, grains are something that I would suggest kind of see how you do if you eliminated them. In terms of fruit, I recommend to eat about one to three servings a day, depending on your blood sugar and your weight. Um, if you're trying to lower your blood sugar, if you're trying to low, lose some weight, I recommend only one whole fruit a day. And then once you're to your goals and where you wanna be, then you can increase it to three times a day. Um, so that's kind of like a good marker for us. Um, in terms of fruit serving sizes, uh, one cup is, I'm sorry, one piece is a serving size, so like an apple or a half of a cup of berries or half of a cup of cut up fruit. Um, I also think it's really important to make sure we add in treats to our foundations, to our healthy diets. Um, so many times in January, I hear, I'm never going to eat sugar again, and I ate too many cookies, and I don't want to ever eat it again, and it's not going to happen. We're going to eat sugar, and we're going to crave something sweet. So really finding treats that you enjoy, like there's dark chocolate, we are a big fan of at the Sklar Center. So having like a piece of dark chocolate or um, making a chia seed pudding, which is um, something you can research online, but it's a healthy way to make kind of like a pudding with chia seeds and coconut milk and it's really tasty. Um, you can blend a banana up for a banana ice cream and that can count as your fruit, but it makes you feel like you're eating something sweet. So just really find 
healthy alternatives, healthy swaps for your favorite dessert so you don't feel deprived. Because that's where we go from the January resolutions where we give up and say, oh, who cares? I'm over it. I'm going to eat whatever I want. To I can do this because I have something that's healthy, that's tasty, that makes me feel good. Um, we want to incorporate that in our diet. So if, if at the Galar Center and myself had to choose a uh, diet to follow in terms of a label, we would choose paleo. Um, I used to tell people to eat paleo-ish, but Dr. Nicole calls it predominantly paleo and I liked that title. So I stole that from her. If you haven't worked with Dr. Nicole, she's another doctor at our staff. Um, so predominantly paleo is really focusing on paleo principles but allowing for some flexibility. It's okay if you're not perfect. It's okay if you're not 100% paleo. Um, a paleo diet consists of meat, fish, so proteins, vegetables, fruits, and fats. Um, so it really just comes down to what our ancestors ate in the paleo, paleo, paleolithic period. Um, it actually excludes all dairy, grains, legumes, and processed foods. Uh, so when we talk about paleo, but allowing for some flexibility, um, Obviously the processed foods we want to stay away from no matter what, uh, those are not healthy, but let's kind of like dive into some of the other ones real quick. Legumes, legumes can be healthy and there's been a lot of research that are, that are good for legumes. The problem with legumes is if we only eat legumes as a protein source, it can be too much carbs for our body and it can raise our blood sugar a little bit too high. Um, so we want to eat them in moderation, but legumes in moderation can totally be a part of your diet, uh, especially if your GI can handle it, if your stomach can handle it. Um, you're at a weight you want to be at. They're a great way to get some kind of fillers in. You can make something exciting. It's just, you don't want to depend on legumes as your only protein source. Uh, dairy, my argument with dairy uh, would be if it's grass fed, it's going to be a lot better than if it's not grass fed. Um, so we want that anti-inflammatory grass fed dairy as a part of our regular diet. We want to leave the regular dairy out of it as much as possible. Um, and then also I, I think fermented dairies like yogurt and kefir, which we talked about earlier, support our gut health. So it's really good to have foods in there that support our gut health. So that's something that it's not totally paleo, but if you're doing a predominantly paleo diet, you can, can add those in as a part of your life. Um, now I talked about how grains can, most people should avoid some grains, but some grains can actually be really healthy for our gut and give us a good gut bacteria. Um, there's these things called resistant starches and resistant starches um, don't process like a regular carb in our body. They actually feed our good gut bacteria. And one way to get a resistant starch is to have uncooked oats. So the whole craze of overnight oats is actually really good because when you have, when you just soak the oats, they are able, you're able to eat them because they soak in there and um, they're not cooked. So they're going to provide you with those resistant starches. Um, and that could be a really good part of your diet. I just wouldn't recommend it every day as your, as your breakfast, where it's like a big bowl of oatmeal, or you want to make sure that you're adding protein or fat in with it. So you're having a more balanced meal. So you have to kind of always think about those things when you're planning out your, how to be total health. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, or I may have mentioned earlier, but everybody is a little bit different. Every body is a little bit different. Um, we all handle things differently. So some people can handle legumes and grains and grass fed dairy better than others. And you have to find that balance that works perfectly for you. It just depends on what your goals are, how your body works um, and your GI health. And between all of those things, you can kind of see how much exactly you can allow in your diet. Um, but if you're looking for new recipes this year, if you're looking for new things to try, choosing something that's paleo is going to fall all of our principles that we talked about. That's high vegetable, low carb or moderate carb, good fats are all, you can search for that paleo terminology, um, which is nice because there's a lot of good recipes out there. So for the visual people out there, here's what your plate should look like. Um, this is what your new nutrition plate is going to look like. You want to make sure that half your plate is vegetables and lots, lots of them. Um, if you're going to need, if you need something more starchy, I recommend doing starchy vegetables first. So sweet potatoes, yams, butternut squash, spaghetti squash, kind of those types of starchier vegetables. Um, and then uh, you want to make sure you have healthy fats. So we have some listed out there. There's olives and coconut and avocado are the main one. The hard part with fats are there's not a ton of options. So you have to be a little bit creative, but we cook with fats. You can add a little olive oil back to your vegetables. Um, you know, you have to just be a little creative, but once you get to figure out what's tasty for you, then that's a really good balance. 
um, good, healthy, quality protein. So it's not just about eating whatever kind of protein, but we want to make sure we're having organic and grass fed, pasture raised. Um, and then we have spices to spice it up because that's what makes everything tasty and delicious. Um, so that's what our diet looks like. And then we just, again, eat less sugar, avoid high carbohydrate meals and avoid processed foods. Uh, so when you're choosing your goals for this year, if you stick to this structure 80% of the time, it should be something that you're able to um, sustain. And it should be something that really gets you to the goals that you uh, want to be at. And that's really what we want you to do when it comes to choosing a diet. So other lifestyle factors. So we just talked a lot about diet. Um, again, you want to have lots of vegetables, healthy fats, and proteins. That's 80% of your diet. And then you have your other 20% to play around with things that you enjoy. Cause as I mentioned, food is love and it's okay to have a little love in our lives. Um, but other lifestyle factors that we, uh, want to focus on are exercise, stress management, and sleep. Um, and because I think I worked as a personal trainer for a few years before I got into nutrition, I saw a lot of people way heavy on just doing exercise to get like, especially for weight loss, but for anything, right. People are like, Oh, I need to be healthy. I'm going to work out. And they, they overwork out and they don't sleep. They don't worry about stress. They don't worry about food. And I really find that to get to whatever your goal is, and this is like, this is very much talking to everyone, whether it's weight loss, lowering your blood sugar, um, preventing diabetes, getting your strong immune systems. You don't have to be so scared of any kind of infections and get sick all the time. All four of the lifestyle factors are really important. So we're gonna kind of touch on the, um, these three right now and give you some tips to get going. Um, so we'll go into exercise first. So exercise we all know is really important. And I think that the, the most common question that I get um, from people is what's the best type of exercise? And my answer is the exercise that you will do on a consistent basis. Um, we need to move as a human race. We need to move our bodies. And I love this picture of this woman hula hooping. She has, looks like she's having a good time. Uh, sure, it's not traditional exercise, but it's movement. We also wanna reframe our mindset to moving your body is showing you self-love. Just like feeding your body vegetables is not torturing you, it's showing your self-love. So moving your body is, is, is so good for us. It feels good. And you wanna find something that really embraces that, that feeling good. It's not here to torture you. Um, I will admit as a trainer in the past and working in gyms, the no pain, no gain, you have to work out six days a week and run two, two hours on a treadmill and all of this advice that we used to give people, I get that it feels torturous, but that's not what we need to do. We actually wanna find something that we enjoy. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of tips on exercise in a bit when it comes to getting results quicker. But in general, I encourage you for 2021, find something you enjoy to do and commit to it. So whether it's walking or dancing or roller skating or running, um, I put classes on there. Um, right now, they're probably all virtual, but there are some amazing virtual classes that will help motivate you while we're doing things. There's jazzercise, there's swimming. Um, so find something that works for you in your schedule that you enjoy, that you love. Um, I would rather people do 30 minutes every day of whether it's intense or not intense than like one day of like a really long workout and just getting so tired they don't work out again the rest of the week. So what is the most important exercise? The one that you'll do move, 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 and move some more. Now, if you want to lose weight quicker, if that's your January resolutions, if that's something that you want to have, um, because you know, we all have, we might've gained a little bit of weight during the holidays. I don't know about you guys, but I found the pandemic holidays to actually be a little harder for me to control, um, my snacking than the regular holidays. Cause I decided I wanted to still bake all of the cookies that I used to bake traditionally, but like I had no one to give them to. So I just had like all of these cookies like around my house. So we might be feeling like a little extra love on us right now. So moving more will help you lose weight quicker, but to have those lifelong strategies to be healthy for life, to help our immune system, to help us feel good. You just want to have consistent movement on a regular basis um, and doing things that you enjoy. Stress management. Stress management is huge and um, very under thought about and underutilized. Um, we as a society, and especially this last year, but I think in general, um, are all living in a underlying low key stress without even realizing it. 
Um, you know, you'll ask someone, are you stressed? Like, no, 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 I'm fine. But then you start talking to them about their lives and it's, you know, between taking care of their parents and picking up the kids and our grandkids and they have jobs and we have to food prep and, you know, we have a, all of us have a very long laundry list of things that we have to accomplish on a regular basis. Um, and I truly believe to help with stress management is you have to actively implement these as a part of your life on a regular basis basis. It cannot just be something that you think, oh, I might be stressed out. I'm going to do this. But you really want to start thinking about how can I um, change my thinking to where I work this into my everyday life. So relaxation exercises, um, even if that's just forcing yourself to sit down for two minutes, positive thinking, I think is actually a great stress management. Um, we get in these loops in our head, right? Uh, and, I talk to, and I talk to a lot of people, so I know it's not just me, but we get in these loops in our head where it's, we get really overwhelmed with everything that's going on, but to just start thinking positively of, it's gonna be okay, and I, I can handle this. Well, let's take, take it one day at a time, helps relieve some of that stress um, so we don't, are not living in this constant stressed state. Um, breathing techniques, I love breathing techniques. If you're ever feeling stressed in the moment, just taking a deep breath in, and exhaling it out, doing that three times alone gives you a nice little reset. So these just need to be a part of your everyday life. So for stress management, I strongly recommend for 2021 to figure out something that uh, works for you because not everything's the same for every person. Some people like meditating, some people don't. Some people like um, you know, having more social support with this kind of thing. So people don't, you have to find what works for you and relaxes you and incorporate it into your everyday life. Um, and for the meditation, just real quick, if you're someone who's never tried meditating, I highly suggest downloading a free app. There's a million of them out there. The first one I can think of right now is Calm, C-A-L-M. Um, there's a lot of free versions and they do um, guided meditations that are like, seven to 10 minutes. So it's a great way to get started to where you can kind of start implementing this into your life, um, but not uh, feeling very overwhelmed by it. Um, getting outside too is really good for our stress management. So we live in beautiful Southern California. Let's take advantage of it, Let's go out for walks. Um, you know, I feel like outside is the only place we can go right now. And this is where I actually feel like people have benefited a lot from the pandemic. Not that I'm saying that the pandemic was good, but people have realized that they like to get outside more and move more. Um, so I really encourage you to stick stress management as a part of your healthy uh, lifestyle habits. The last lifestyle um, tip I have for you is sleep. Sleep is another one that I find um, that people kind of think like, I've heard from so many people, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Or, oh, I have to get my workout in today. So I'm gonna wake up at 4 a.m. to go do my workout. And even though I go to bed at midnight because I was up all night watching TV or food prepping or doing whatever, but we, we shortcut sleep to get our other things in throughout the day. I understand that we live in a very, very busy world. There's a lot of demands on us. Um, but I strongly encourage you to rethink that this year uh, and know that if you wanna have that health long-term, not just short-term health, but long-term health. Sleep is where we regenerate. It's where we um, repair and it's needed for everything. It's needed for a strong immune system. It's needed for our brain health. It's needed for our hormones. It's needed for everything. Actually, Dr. Scalar will be doing a sleep lecture. I believe it's March. So if you're on our email list, keep an eye out for that if you want to learn a little bit more about sleep. Um, but here are some tips to help with better sleep. If you're struggling with sleep, there's a lot of things that can be done. Uh, these are pretty basic, but they're things that a lot of people don't do very often. Um, turning on off our electronics one to two hours before bed. That can be very challenging. Like even tonight, you guys are gonna be on a Zoom meeting till about seven. Some of us go to bed before nine. Um, so you wanna do the best you can, even if it's 30 minutes. Um, if you're someone who likes to watch TV all the way up into the point to where you fall asleep, I suggest you um, try maybe like switch to a podcast or a book on tape where you can, or a book if you like books. But if you don't like books, you can do like a book on tape where you can at least put it on. I know the electronic is in your room, but you're not staring at it. And that might help calm your brain um, to, to prepare you for sleep before that. Avoiding caffeine after two, um, avoiding alcohol at night. Uh, I know alcohol tends to help us fall asleep and passed out, but it doesn't actually really give us a true uh, 
sleep that helps us recover and repair. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're, we're avoiding that to get a true good night's sleep. We wanna exercise daily. So a lot of these go hand in hand. If we exercise early in the morning, a lot of times we will feel ready for sleep when it's time for sleep. So we wanna make sure that we're staying active. If we're staying in all day and sitting all day, sometimes it's very hard to fall asleep. So we wanna get moving as much as we can. Um, we also don't suggest if you are gonna watch TV at night, nothing that's stimulating, um, including the news, especially <laughs> lately. <laughs> um, it can get very overwhelming and we can get very um, drawn into it. So at least try to find something that's a little bit more calming for you. Maybe something that's a little bit funny, something that will relax you and it's positive, something that won't get you all riled up. Um, and then lastly, which is kind of the same, similar to the stress management. So you can tie these two lifestyle factors together is doing some kind of breathing exercises or meditation before falling asleep. Um, so this one I, we have here, listen to a CD, but actually nowadays it's podcasts or whatever's on your phone, but there's a lot of free resources out there. There's sleep stories, um, there's sleep meditation. Um, there's so many different things that you can try out that you can listen to for free and see if you enjoy them. But I encourage you to try to work in 10 to 15 minutes before bed and see how you feel. Um, you know, eventually you want to get it to where you're doing that on a regular basis, but right now set yourself a goal for doing a couple times a week. Um, and again, seeing how you feel, see if that helps you sleep. So I find that, um, we all kind of heard these things that I've given you before. Hopefully there were some tips and tricks in there that you, that resonated with you and you go, oh yeah, I should be incorporating that more often. Um, but in general, we all know that vegetables are good. McDonald's are bad. We all know that we need to move. We all know we need to work out. Uh, the struggle that I have for, that I think that most people have is to how do it actually incorporate these into your healthy into your lifestyle, um, into your everyday life. And this is the difference between an extreme diet and lifestyle changes. So it's easy to do an extreme diet and commit to something for 30, 60, 90 days. Um, it's just easy. You can just tell yourself, I'm gonna commit to this, we commit to it and then it's over. And then we just kind of go, oh, go back to whatever. Like there's so many people I know who I've worked with who do dry wearies, so they don't drink all of January. Um, and, but they like already have that expectation that when February comes, they're like opening the wine instead of I'm going to use this time as a detox. And then I'm going to try to not drink so much. They use it as a, Oh, I'm going to do it for a month to show myself I can, but then I'm going back to my everyday habits. So we really want to incorporate these small changes into our life. So how do we do that? The first step that I think is extremely important and mostly overlooked is knowing your why, um, why do you want to be healthy? Like really think about it. What is the most important thing in your life and how will that change if you lose your health? And if you start to really think about those questions, you start to really think about that. What will your life look like in 10 years if you don't do anything about your health? And sometimes the, the answers can get a little bit depressing, um, but at least it encourages you to know why you're making these changes. So then when you go back and you're having a hard day and you're just over it and you have that like, I just can't do this anymore, Go back and read your why. Go, go remember why you started this journey in the first place. Remember why it's so important for you to be healthy long-term. And it'll be easier to stick to those, those general principles. Um, so that's kind of the first exercise. The next one that I think is extremely important to be successful is writing out a plan and creating a schedule. So just to kind of give you guys some, a couple little tips and tricks with it um, right now, so you can incorporate this and start doing it at home, is uh, instead of just saying, okay, Jessica's right. I'm going to eat healthy. Like all of this was amazing. I'm going to eat paleo. And then tomorrow you wake up and you're just like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. We need to have a little bit of a clear plan and clear action steps. So we know exactly what we need to be doing. Um, so I like it, especially in the beginning when you're making these lifestyle changes is like on a Friday or on a Sunday or whenever you have time before your week begins is to write out your schedule of when you're going to do all of these things. When are you going to grocery shop? When are you going to food prep? What are you going to food prep? I know meal planning is not fun, but it's so important to kind of have these things set in advance. So when you're making these changes, you can actually implement these changes. So when are you going to grocery shop? When are you going to food prep? What are you going to cook? What are you going to do with these times? You should already have kind of your general schedule written out and um, you kind of just fill in the gaps. When do you have time to exercise? When do you have time to meditate? When do you have time for your own self-care? When do you have time to relax? And you can really start to plug those areas in so you can make sure that you're accomplishing what you want to accomplish on a regular basis. Um, it's a lot at first 
but when you become accustomed to living a certain way, that's when it becomes second nature. So I used to do this on a weekly basis. I don't do it every week anymore because now I kind of know how to incorporate these like lifestyle changes and that's things into my life. And that's when you know it's a lifestyle change is when you kind of just wake up and go, well, I wake up and I do 10 sun salutations. And that's just what I do to get moving in the morning. And that's my thing. It could be your thing if you want to do it to where you get moving right away. But I wake up, I make sure I stretch. I do my 10 sun salutations. I have a little breathing exercise and it helps me through my day and I don't have to think about it, but it's part of my routine. And it's because I've been sticking with it for so long and I know it makes me feel good for so long that that's just what I do. Um, so it's really important to kind of write out this plan. So take all four of the lifestyle factors that we talked about and figure out how you can incorporate those in your life. Now it's a lot. So if you wanted to start off with just um, diet for the next two weeks and get that settled, great. And then you can add exercise get that settled. Great. And then you can add stress management and then you can add sleep. So we can, you can build on top of each other. The next thing, um, which is one of the receptors Clark talked about our feel better lifestyle program, which I'm going to go into in a second. But the next thing that I find where, um, working with someone so helpful is to hold yourself accountable. Uh, it is hard to make these changes. It is very hard to make these changes. And by holding yourself accountable or finding somebody that will hold you accountable, sometimes is what you need to truly make that next step. We say over and over again, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to lower my blood sugar. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to work out. Like we make a lot of empty promises to ourselves, but by holding ourselves accountable, we can get to where we need to be. I also think it's really important to set goals, um, but not just weight loss goals because weight loss goals usually take the longest, especially as we age. Uh, a lot of times women will come in and well, men too. And because the men, again, the reason why they work with a nutritionist is because they want to lose weight. So they'll come in and talk to me like, well, I want to lose 20 pounds in two months or whatever, three months. Um, and in a month, if they haven't hit that yet, they feel like it's not working, but do you have goals? Like I want to say that I work out four times a week and my goal is to make sure I cook three meals out of the week. And my goal is something that's a little bit more of like an action step so we can accomplish them. So we can feel like we're actually living up to what we say we're going to live up to is really, really, really helpful for long-term success. So be okay with weight loss going slow, write out your goals, write out your plan, stick to it and hold yourself accountable. And that's how you get started right now on how to live a healthy lifestyle. But <laughs> We all want results now. <laughs> I want results now. I mean, I'll admit, like, I know all of these things, but when it comes down to like wanting to lose weight or, um, you know, when it comes down to certain things, it's like, but I need results now, or I'm not going to stick to it. So I understand that. So, um, I'm going to go through a couple little tricks, quick tricks and tips that kickstart you that are really good to help us get there a little faster, but you want to make sure that you have that mindset of, you're going back to living these lifelong principles that we just talked about. You're going back to eating all your vegetables, to getting your exercise in, to stress management, to sleep. Um, Cause without those, none of these are gonna work long-term. So in terms of exercise, um, I know that I mentioned that the best type of exercise is the exercise that you'll do, um, which is true, but HIT training, which stands for high intensity interval training uh, is an amazing, amazing way to get your exercise in and to start, especially if you wanted to kind of like get a little couple of little pounds off you, it really helps kickstart our metabolism. It's also really good for our cognition too. So if something is your goal is to, get to like see if your brain frog can go away, HIIT training is really good for that. And what it is, is it's, um, moments of hard work, hard bouts of work followed by moments of recovery. So the traditional cardio used to be you get on a bike or you get on a treadmill or you go for a walk and you do like a low grade cardio for like an hour or two. Now we're finding that we can do shorter workouts, which is great in our busy lives, 30 minutes or so. Um, and it goes back and forth between high intensity to moderate intensity. And you have to find your level, which is what gets a little bit challenging, but you want to make sure that you're pretty much working out to where you're out of breath. You can't really talk and then you can recovering where you're bringing your heart rate back down. So those are kind of like the back and forth intervals. Um, and you can do this in a whole option, a whole bunch of ways. Like if you enjoy walking, find a hill, walk up that hill, walk down the hill, walk up the hill. And you got two little bouts of energy within that little 30 minute walk that you do. Um, there's a ton of free 
workout videos online. If you Google like no equipment, low impact, hit training, there's like a ton of stuff that you can do in your home. They'll guide you 20 minutes where they take you through this process. Um, so I really encourage you to kind of start thinking about exercise. If you want to get results a little quicker, thinking about working this little bit higher intensity exercise in. Spin classes are really great because they kind of force you to do HIIT training. I know, again, right now, not all spin classes are open, but a lot of people invested in the Peloton. So you'll probably be enjoying like that HIIT type training where you push for a little bit and then you bring it down. Um, so really try to find that. I recommend incorporating that into your life about 30 minutes, anywhere from three to five days a week. And then the other days you can move with just yoga or light walking. Um, so when it comes to diet, how do we get results a little bit quicker? Um, these things are considered a little bit more extreme, quote unquote. They're not extreme, extreme, but they're a little bit more something that we want to kickstart to and stick to. Um, there's intermittent fasting, keto, and paleo recess are the three that I would recommend if you wanted to start some kind of diet to go. Um, so intermittent fasting is uh, where you have periods where you eat and periods where you don't eat. It is now the rage. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about intermittent fasting before. Um, there's a lot of really, really, really great ways to intermittent fast, but I'm actually going to talk about a specific, a specific program in the next slide. So I'll save that for a second. Um, ketogenic is a high fat, moderate protein, low carb diet. Um, the most famous ketogenic diet was Atkins, um, which is a ketogenic diet not done correctly. So there's, a, there's some good ways to do ketogenic diets and bad ways to do ketogenic diets. Um, in general, you still want to live with those principles that we talked about. We're eating a lot of vegetables, good, healthy, quality food, and then you're having moderate protein and good, healthy fats. Um, so definitely, if you're going to do a ketogenic diet, you want to make sure that you find recipes and things that support that. Because a lot of ketogenic diets are like all conventional dairy, and it's all about like too much protein, too much cheese, um, but you want to have a lot of vegetables. A lot of people lose weight pretty quickly on a ketogenic diet, but it's hard for everyone to maintain for a long period of time. So it's something that you can do for the month to kind of reset your body. But I wouldn't recommend to think that you want to live like that forever, unless it works. Some people it works for to live forever. So that's everyone's different. But for most people, we kind of go in and out of the ketogenic state between keto and paleo type things. Paleo resets and the most popular one is a whole 30 can be really, really helpful. They're, they're a strict form of paleo, um, but they're easy to follow. The whole 30 is for 30 days. Um, so it's something that you can try. And I wouldn't say that you have to live like that forever, but it's a really good reset. It's just to reset your body, get a couple pounds off you. And then the thing is, again, when you're done with the whole 30, you're not going back to eating fast food and how your conventional the standard American diet, you're going back to all those principles that we talked about before. It's just to kind of get your body um, a little bit reset. So one program that we use that I kind of wanted to talk about because it is the new year and um, we all tend to want to jumpstart our health in the new year is Prolon. Um, and Prolon is a really great fasting diet. And what it is, is it mimics um, a water fast and a water fast has been shown to have so many health issues uh, or so many health benefits, sorry, um, but they're very, very, very hard to do for most people. So what Prolon is, is it's, it's a kit that you'll get um, and it kind of walks you through where you eat pretty low calories. You're eating between 1100, 800 calories a day. So you're not eating a ton of food, but you're eating something and it gives you those same benefits as a water fast. And it's been studied a lot and we've, we've used it a lot at Scholar Center and I feel like everyone who's done it has been very successful doing it and it just kickstart them into the next gear. Prolon is not going to be your answer to where you do it one time and then all of a sudden you have all your weight off, but it gets you moving and going in the right direction. If you're someone, and I can be like this at times as well, where like I've been eating a lot of sweets and I've been following off my plan and I need something to like kick me back into gear, Prolon something that's really good for that because it could be something that you can use on a, you can use to kind of reset your body. Um, it's a great tool. It's easy to follow. You don't have to think about it. Um, what it looks like is you can kind of see the little packets in here. You get a box and each day is numbered one, two, three, four, five, and you just eat all those components in one day. Um, so it's a version of intermittent fasting. Um, if you're doing fasting in other ways, fasting is something that you can do long-term. Prolon is something that you do on a once a month basis. It's recommended to do three months, but even if you just do it once a month, it's a great way to kind of 
get rid of some of that bloat, kickstart you, make you feel a little better, get your body moving again, get your mind thinking about eating, eating healthy. And a lot of times I'll have patients start off with prolon because that five days when they're doing prolon, they can use that time instead of having to go to the grocery store and meal prep and plan to plan out their healthy diet and their healthy meal moving forward. So it's a really good transition into this everyday long-term habit. Because again, I know I mentioned that diets don't work and fasting don't work, but they don't work long-term, but using something like this, that's a short-term trick to, to get your body um, kind of working a little better, get your immune system working better, get you feeling better, get you just, just to have more energy, um, really helps kickstart you in the right direction. Um, it's all, the nice thing about Prolong, it's all self-contained. You don't have to think about a thing. You open a box, you add water, you eat it, you're done. And um, most people really enjoy that part of Prolong. Um, so we really want to help people get better at Scalar Center. It's been our mission, um, Dr. Scalar, Dr. Nicole and myself and Dr. Scalar ever since she's opened the center to uh, help you guys um, not only feel your best, but hold you accountable to know what to do on an everyday basis. I think that the, the patients that I hear feedback from where it's like, I worked with them a year ago and then they met with Dr. Sklar and they're still, they lost all their weight and their blood pressure looks good and their cholesterol looks good and their blood sugar looks good because they've implemented these things for life makes me so happy um, because they really embraced what we've done together and they've moved it forward into the next level. And that's what we want to do at Scholar Center. We want to hold you accountable this year. We want to help you with your goals. We want to help you with your lifestyle. It's all about balance. We're all different. I know I gave you guys a lot of information today um, about diet and exercise and stress management. And what it is, is about finding the things that are the most important for your body, setting your body chemistry up correctly to where you don't have cravings and you feel at your best and implementing those on a slow basis. So you can live that for life. Um, so because we want to do these things and help walk you through the process, we've created the feel better lifestyle programs. Um, and what this is, is it's a three month program. Um, one, because we really know that it takes at least three months to implement change. And two, because I truly believe to do long term change, we have to make small steps. And this is where you'd be working with me um, on a pretty regular basis to have you hold accountable. So all of those things I talked about on that one implementation slide. We create a plan together. We create a schedule together. We'd have you hold accountable. We give you, I give you some recipes and some meal plans. And it's not just here, follow this meal plan and talk to me in a month. It's what works best for your body. What makes you happy? What are you feeling? What are you doing? What do you, how are you, how can we implement this? You can actually achieve this every day. Cause it's, it's hard to live in today's world. And, you know, I cook probably 90% of my food and my husband jokes that most of our lives is food prep and cleanup because we're just constantly in the kitchen and you got to like learn chicks and tips and tricks to make sure this can be doable as a part of your life. And that's what we want for you. Um, so our feel better lifestyle programs are something where we really can dive into what you need individually and make it happen for you. So we hear, I want to hear your story. We get to have a good hour conversation about what What's stopping you? What have you done? What do you need to do? What are your goals? What are you looking to accomplish? And then from there, I see everyone about twice a month, either through Zoom or through a phone call. Um, Cause again, you need to have that accountability and we always keep building on the last action step. So how did you do the last few weeks? Did you do your homework? Did you do what you're supposed to do? How did you feel? Is it too much? Is it too little? And we kind of build upon that. So it's something that we wanted to introduce everyone for January. It is not a quick fix fix it all, like you do it one time, three months, and then you're all your health problems are going to go away and you're going to lose your weight. But it's a way to learn how to eat to where maybe in time, depending on what your goals are, you will get to where you need to be. So in six months, you look back and you go, oh my gosh, I'm exactly where you, I need to be. I've lost my 40 pounds and I've, my, my doctor's not telling me I need to be on cholesterol medication and blood pressure medication and all of these things that cause other health issues. Um, so that's really what I like to focus on with our feel better lifestyle programs. We want you to feel better now. Um, the cost is down below here, which we can give you more information is if you want to pay monthly for the three months, it's 195 or you can pay in total for 525. Um, I wanted, I know it's kind of talking about two different things, but I definitely wanted to make sure you guys knew about Prolon. Because if you're someone who's just like, I just want to get started, then we have Prolon kits and we can give you some more information on that. Um, it's a great 
kickstart. It's a great fasting kickstart. And if that's something you're interested in, you can text this number. Um, please make sure you text your name, your phone number, and your email so we can get you the information. Um, we'll give you the information on Prolon, what the kit is. I believe it's 250. I haven't checked the price. I have to recheck the price. Um, so text that number if you want more information about it. Um, I find that a perfect combination is starting with the kit of Prolon and then doing this three month program. If you're really ready to get results and to make yourself feel the best that you can feel. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you can text health coach to that line um, and we'll give you an email with some more information on our feel better lifestyle program and some more information to get you started um, where I'll, I will, I'll kind of figure out what your goals are and how we can get you there. Um, but yeah, our goals is to help you actually implement these things that we talk about on a regular basis. I feel like I'm always talking about eating your vegetables and working out. Um, but we want you to figure out how to work this in as a part of your everyday life. Uh, we will be taking questions. I'm going to leave the screen up and I can also get the chat up. We will be taking questions if anyone wants to the chat. I also just wanted to bring up, because I know I talked about gut health real quick, that in February, we're going to be doing a gut health um, seminar. So if you're not a part of our list, text LIST to get on our email list so you can get the emails for that. Um, Dr. Nicole, if you have not met her, is a gut health wizard. <laughs> She's amazing. And if you're already like, you're like, I too have gut issues. Like I have cramping and bloating and I have acid reflux. And I don't know why. It's an amazing lecture for you to join. Um, so we can figure out that piece of the puzzle. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your time. And let's see here. I believe I can pull up the chat. I've got the chat. Uh, um, oh, it's, perfect. It's showing up for me, right? So if perfect. anybody has a question and wants to type it in the chat, it's at the bottom of your screen with a little bubble, it looks like a cartoon bubble and it says chat underneath. And thank you, Jessica, that was fabulous. And I have to tell everybody, Jessica, Jessica's genius is number one, helping you go in baby steps and taking things where you want to go in a way that you can implement. It's not like, boom, you know, here's the program, you know, like it or leave it. Um, and, and that's what we've really seen success in our patients working with Jessica is, you know, if you, if you can't do it right now, well, here's a modification and we'll just go little by little. So if you've been struggling, this is your person to work with, this is your gal. Um, and it's great. I see so many people on this call that we haven't heard from from a long time, for a long time. And um, I'm really happy and I'm hoping that the start of the new year is, is why you're here and hoping to implement a better, healthier world for yourself. So um, we'll wait a few minutes and see if anybody has questions. If you want to just unmute yourself and ask a question, you can do that too. It's not like we have a ton of questions all at the same time. Any questions? Um, I saw one that came into just me in the chat um, explaining okay. what is whole foods and uncooked oats. So whole foods, I, I consider anything that um, has minimal processing. So if you want to get like technical, like even like almond milk can be considered a processed food, although healthy, but it still goes through some processing to, and there's still some additives to it. Um, whole foods are, you're just eating an apple. You're eating a sweet potato, you're eating the chicken, you're eating really just anything that's in its wholest form. Um, so that's something you wanna eat as much as possible. Um, for the uncooked oats, which give you a little bit better of a resistant starch, you still have to soak them. So you don't just eat like raw oats dry, you still soak them. And when you soak them, it helps break them down a little bit. And so your body's actually able to di digest them a little bit easier. So one of the popular things right now is overnight oats. You can actually even buy them at the grocery store pre-made. But what it is, is just oats soaked. There's no heating involved because when you heat it, it kills off those resistant starches. So a lot of times it's like with the processed foods, it's how is it being processed? The heating process a lot of times is what ruins um, the food um, chemistry and is not as good for our body. So we want to make sure that we're having uncooked oats to to give us a good gut bacteria and then whole foods 
it's very hard to eat 100% whole foods. That's where the 80-20 is. We want to just eat as much. We're looking at our plate. We see broccoli. We see spaghetti squash. We see chicken. And those are three different whole foods with no processing or minimal processing to it. So I have a question, Jessica. So what do you eat with your overnight oats? Do you add some fruit to it? Uh, do you add some milk or yogurt? So personally for me, I like to um, soak mine in water and then I rinse them off really good. And then I add a little bit of like um, almond milk or coconut milk or some kind of nut milk. And I like to add chia seeds. So I'll, I'll soak mine with chia seeds because then chia seeds will give us a little bit of protein and fiber. So we're kind of making it a full meal. So instead of having like a half cup of oats, I'll do like a fourth cup of oats and a couple of tablespoons of chia seeds. Um, and then I put a couple of blueberries in there because I just love blueberries. And that's one of my favorite little sweeteners. But I have some people who will put like coconut shreds, some people who put almonds and nuts, um, kind of like mm -hmm. that breakfast porridge. And I find that if breakfast, like I like protein-based breakfasts most of the time, um, but if breakfast is something that you like cereal, overnight oats is a great transition where it's at least leaving you into you're getting something that's beneficial for our gut and it's a little lower carb than just kind of eating like cereal and that um, high carb, high sugar meals that we're used to eating. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Nancy said, I would like to email a question to see how Dr. Sklar's hormone balancing is in coordination of this. So um, I'm not exactly sure what the question is, but there certainly is the, how your hormones are working certainly affects your energy, your immunity, your weight. And one of the problems is um, in terms of, let's see, what did you say? Email address to use. Um, anyhow, I'll just finish this and then I'll explain how to get a hold of us. Um, we find that when women, for example, at menopause lose their estrogen, you tend to put on more weight around your midsection. That changes your metabolism. The, the kind of general decline in our thyroid function as we age ends up leading to gradually putting weight on, gradually having our cholesterol levels go up, um, can contribute to low energy. So our hormones have a big influence. Our DHEA levels are another hormone that goes down as we age. By the time we're in our mid forties, it's half of what it was in our twenties. By the time we're in our sixties, it's a quarter of what it was in our twenties. And this is our energy, vitality, blood sugar regulation, immunity, muscle building hormone. So from my point of view, and I'm a big believer in hormones and their benefits, a lot of what we consider aging changes are in fact hormone decline not just in some inevitable unfolding of aging that we're helpless you know, to do anything about. There's a lot that we can do about it. Um, if you have more questions, you can um, just text us at this number, the 562-280-2191. Say that you have a question and give us your email and um, tell us what your question is. Otherwise, you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at sclarcenter.com. And I just wanted to make a couple of comments, what you were saying, Jessica, about cravings, for example, about your body, if it's not in the healthiest state, can be one of the reasons that people have cravings. If people um, have yeast overgrowth in the intestine, can be a reason for carb cravings. If you are somebody who converts your carbohydrates and your dairy into certain, and it's a genetic thing that would happen, you break your carbohydrates, your grains and your dairy into products that are literally like morphine. They are addictive. And so it's not just a matter of like Jessica said, willpower to overcome it, you have chemical processes going on in your body that are making you want to eat that, that they're as compelling as an addiction. So I think 
resetting our metabolism, getting at the roots of some of these things is really important so that you don't feel like, like Jessica said, it's not a failure of you as a person. It's not a failure of your willpower. It's that no one's discovered what the underlying issue is. Why do you have cravings? And so if we can get to that, you know, you you can reduce your cravings and not have it simply be a battle of wills with yourself. <clears throat> Any other questions from anybody? And also one thing I wanted to add about sleep, um, sleep deprivation is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. It's a risk factor for diabetes and it's a risk factor for weight gain. So you are really working against yourself if you're shorting yourself on sleep and trying to be in a weight loss program. Sleep is as important as your exercise. So there have been lots of studies that have been done on people and how much they eat the day after they've had short sleep, even by a couple of hours. Calories go up, amount of food goes up. So getting adequate sleep is super important for your metabolism. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that on. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, thank you so much for attending. Uh, it was great to see such wonderful turnout here at the beginning of the year. Our next talk is going to be, is it the 28th, Jessica? Yes. The 28th of January, I'll be talking about new concepts and slowing down the aging process. So you've heard one of them, which is hormones, but there are some other things that we'll talk about as well. We'll be sending out information about it in the intervening time. So um, be on the lookout and thanks so much. Great. Bye everyone. Let's see. Stop sharing. Recording.